I recently received the Ray 5 20 watt laser engraver from Longer. Now you can check out the unboxing, the link is in the description. In this video, I show the assembly. Of course, I make some mistakes, but I have some observations with regard to that. And finally, I'd like to show a sample of the engraving that I make with the machine. Interested in getting one yourself? Stick around to the end of the video for an exclusive offer for CNC time lapse viewers. So let's get into it. If you recall in the unboxing video, the quick start guide is illustrated for simple assembly and broken into several steps. Each step may reference components and hardware, which can be found conveniently in labeled bags. There's not a lot to the assembly, but don't let the lack of steps fool you. It's important to pay very close attention to the illustrations because, unfortunately, the quick start guide leans heavily on the artwork and less so on providing detailed descriptions or areas where mistakes could be made. As you'll see, if you're not paying close enough attention, you may find yourself wasting time undoing several steps to correct mistakes. Very early on in the assembly process, I made a critical error. I failed to notice the orientation of the extruded aluminum and made some assumptions about the direction of where the flat sides were to be placed. The drawings were a bit hard to see, the details showing the printed logo located on one of the flat surfaces, facing up. Now this is going to come back to bite me later on, as you'll see. I actually made this mistake on the adjacent side as well. It would have been nice if the quick start guide had some kind of note indicating this key detail. To Longer's credit, they provide countless tutorials on their YouTube channel and links to assembly videos on their product page itself. I really can't fault them too much here. You live and learn, and I should have paid better attention. Step 1 requires the assembly of the frame. Here, I install all four of the 20 series inside corner joints that are included and tighten both of their set screws. One thing I really like about the design that Longer chose to go with here is to include a bolt through the extruded aluminum piece into the threaded end of the other extruded piece. This simple step greatly increases the strength and makes it easier to align and level the assembly when finally tightened. Without this bolt, over time the assembly may lose rigidity, relying solely on those corner connectors. Set screws can loosen over time, especially if exposed to vibrations, so this is a nice touch to have these extra bolts. Here you can see I loosen and tighten them, making minor adjustments until the frame is level. After taking some time to study the drawings, I align the gantry assembly onto the rails of what would make up the machine's Y-axis. As you can see, the assembly slides quite smoothly. Next, the instructions depict the assembly of the legs and the Y-axis hard stop, a screw designed to prevent the assembly from traveling too far in motion. After a little more time to study the drawing, I find the threaded holes for the hard stop on the one side. Only one hard stop is required, the other one comes already installed. Nice! Now it's time for the other legs. This is where I discover my mistake from step one. I start taking things apart so I can rotate the two end extrusion 90 degrees. Doing so will allow the legs to screw into the other side of the assembly. Thankfully, there's not a lot going on here thus far. A bit of time wasted, but that's about it. Hopefully, if you put this together, you'll catch this detail sooner or at least learn from my mistake and save yourself 15 minutes. My blunders aside, if you're really into this kind of content, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It really does help this channel out. So as you can see, the extruded aluminum has been rotated 90 degrees, and now the longer logo is facing up. That's the smooth side. In addition to that, it includes uh, holes for the legs, as well as the controller box on the front to be mounted to it. Otherwise, like I said, I wouldn't be able to actually mount these to it properly and as you can see here too i have to do the exact same thing for the the rear uh, again disassemble it rotate it 90 <laughs> and then reassemble it since you've already seen this process i'll spare you having to watch it again we'll just skip ahead Oh, 
Okay, and now we can officially install the legs. Now there's three total legs plus the controller box. There's two bolts per leg. So if you're interested in saving a little bit of money and purchasing one of these yourself, uh, there's a promotion code that I can give you, details in the description, that can give you a little bit of a savings. In addition to, it will really help this channel out. Uh, I make a little bit of money on that sale, so certainly do appreciate it if you're interested in uh, helping the channel out as well. And now for the controller, it is two bolts. And once installed, it will be nice and level. And you can see really from the, the beauty of this design is its simplicity. There's not a lot going on here, but it doesn't need a lot in order for it to function. And I uh, certainly appreciate that. So I get a little bit ahead of myself and I just attach the laser for now just to see kind of where it fits. But uh, <laughs> checking the instructions again, I noticed, oh wait, I still got to deal with the belts and the limit switches. So the next step actually is installing the belts. Now they do illustrate a little bit about how it's routed, but uh, I had to really analyze the, the illustration uh, because there's obviously an orientation up or down and then also to how they're secured to the rails themselves. So you got to pay close attention to that. I was a little confused. Um, the instructions didn't do a great job, in my opinion, of illustrating how they're actually secured. It does just show the bolts going down into the uh, T-nuts, the, the roll-in T-nuts, uh, but it, it doesn't really show you anything about how they're slacked or what their tension is. You just kind of have to figure this out. I'm assuming anyway, this is going to be something that's illustrated in a video. If you were to watch one of their tutorials, I'm sure that would be covered. But again, the uh, quick start is a little lacking in this area. And so I would recommend maybe if you have any questions, just go ahead and, and, and check online, go to their YouTube site and, uh, and, and give it a try. Like I said, once you get it assembled, it's really straightforward. You, I don't think there's any questions after that. It's just that initial uh, setup causes some questions, I think, in my opinion. So you can see here where I'm constantly checking the instructions and looking at the illustration and trying to determine what is it meant there. Now, there's a little slot there at the very end um, where the feet are that allow you to run the um, the tensioner or the belt there or the timing belt um, through that slot so you can actually hold down the the belt and then what you do is you take your nut into the the t nut there in the in that track and you basically just compress the two together and it holds one side in place and from there you can stretch the belt out and secure it once you do one it, it's really simple you it's easily understood but at first because again the illustration is lacking there um, it, you just kind of have to figure it out. It's brutally simple though, uh, once you do figure it out. And once you do set up one side, it is literally identical uh, on the next side. So not too complicated. Again, loop it through so that the, uh, the, the gear is picking up on the belt and then secure it through the slots on both sides. Put your T-nuts in, secure it down to the belt and tension it pull it and you're good to go and finally I uh, just needed to finish that one last belt and again just uh, looping it through the belt needs to be slipped through that little hole there and then it's secured down by the nut and it is done so this next step is working with the limit switches themselves now what's really nice is there's an illustration on the extruded aluminum that tells you exactly where you place these limit switches. Uh, takes all the guesswork out of it. Don't even have to measure. What's interesting though is reasons why I would need to install that, right? It seems like this should be already pre-installed from the factory. Maybe there's an, a reason why they don't do that. Maybe they don't want it to be damaged in shipping. That's probably the reason. Uh, but it just seems like that could be installed right from the factory not having to deal with it. But that's just me. So again, you can see how simple this design is. Um, not a whole lot to this. So this next step, we actually do the wiring of the wiring harness. 
connecting to the motors and to the sensors. Now there's a certain order of operation here and it, it might take a, a one or two tries to, to get it going. That's what I had to do. But again, it's not rocket science, so uh, it's pretty straightforward. One thing to note though, is once you do connect your motors to the wiring harness, move the gantry very slowly and, and move each axis very slowly because you don't want to send a current back through the system. Uh, be very careful with that. So at this point, uh, I am looking at how to secure the laser itself to the gantry. And there, I've, it took me a couple bit, there's a couple threaded holes on the side there. I, at first I thought it was in the back because there's spots for that. Uh, anyway, they get secured on the top. That's pretty straightforward. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this assembly of the longer Ray 5 20 watt laser engraver. Next, enjoy this brief montage. If it piques your interest and you want to learn more, please check out the links in the video description as well as a promo to get 5% off your entire order. Stay tuned for more projects and a final review of the longer Ray 5 20 watt laser engraver. If you've stuck around this far, thank you. Please leave a like and a comment letting me know what you want me to make next. See you later.